Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, a couple days ago, Unreal Engine 5.1 shipped, and there is a ton to love in that particular release, but one thing for uh, Apple users that was unfortunate is, uh, support for M1 and M2 chips wasn't uh, part of the release. You have to build it from source yourself. And I asked in the comments, would you guys be interested in uh, an Unreal Engine 5.1 on Mac? video? And the answer seemed to be overwhelmingly yes. So here we are. I went through the process of building it from code myself. Uh, there are a couple things to be aware of if you want to do this. First off, you need a ton of file space. So 178 gigabytes after it was built. So I actually had to build it to uh, an external SSD, but hey, that's up and done. Now actually building this guy from code isn't too hard. You're going to need to have Xcode, which is always fun. Um, and then you basically just come in here and do the uh, setup command and then generate project file commands. Let those two things run, and then you open up the workspace in Xcode. Now then Xcode kicks in and all of the fun begins. Uh, but once you are done, you will eventually find in here under binaries, Mac, you have a shiny new version of Unreal Editor. Now what I'm gonna do is show you two versions side by side and some of the flaws here. So here is uh, the built version of Unreal Engine. And then we've also got the Epic's Games Launcher version of it. And this is going to show you something kind of interesting right away. So uh, you'll notice here when I do these new projects, first off, our built version isn't here, so it's, it's run externally. But the other thing here is when I went to go create my own project, it isn't compatible with the 5.1 project. So if you're running the 5.1 version from the Epic Launcher, your project isn't compatible with the uh, M1, M2 version using Apple Silicon. One of those things definitely to be aware of, you're gonna wanna create your own project for each. Speaking of which, we're gonna do the exact same thing in both. So we're gonna start things off. This is the Rosetta version of Unreal Engine, uh, and we're going to create a project, uh, so you're going to see basically how long it takes to get up and running. The nice thing is, new project creation for both 5.1 versions is a lot faster, so this isn't as painful as it would seem, uh, but I'm using a uh, an asset from the Epic Launcher that we're going to import into our scene. Uh, okay, so let's load that one in. All right, so here, blank project, blank project, and we will call this one uh, Intel and create it. So this is using the standard um, built-in Rosetta compatibility layer. Now I did some tests on these that I'm gonna do off camera. Uh, I ran them both for like 10, 15 minutes, full charge battery. Uh, they use the exact same amount of battery. So you're not getting any battery savings out of this particular release. Just one of those things to be aware of. All right, so I'm gonna go back here to the Epic's Games Launcher. Uh, and we're going to add something in from the vault, which is a very large demo project called the City Environment Mega Pack. Add it to our project. And we're going to do this for both. So we're going to have the exact same project to compare between. So this is the Intel version right here. So compatibility layer 5.0, add it into project. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to just come back once this is fully loaded up and we will see uh, how the performance is on an M1 Mac. By the way, this is an uh, M1 Ultra that with the 24 uh, GPU. So not the 32 uh, chip one, but very close to it. So one of the faster M1s that you could buy. Okay, so here we are. This is the project level open. This is uh, Yokohama demo level. So I'm gonna leave it exactly as it is because I'm gonna do the exact same process using the M1 version. So all I'm going to do is turn on the FPS right here and then let's kind of just take a look at what happens in our level once our menu goes away. Come on, menu. All right, there, okay, so our menu is gone. So over here you can see right off the hop we're getting 16-ish uh, frames per second. We're gonna go down this street and see what happens. So 16, pretty constant, 17, 18, 17, uh, and so on. So uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the hallway, we're getting about 21. Let's head on back over here. Uh, all right, so 21-ish, 18, so on when we're down in this little area. So that gives you a pretty good idea of the performance uh, just out of the box. I'm gonna turn off all of the objects in scene, like the, the widgets. So here you're seeing again, 17, 16, 15, 16, 17 frames per second. Uh, that is the kind of performance you can see. Now you're gonna notice there's a lot of messages up on screen and there's a few reasons behind that. First off, I never built any of the light maps for this particular level and that would definitely improve performance a bit. So I'm gonna do that in just a second. Now the reason why I didn't pre-build them uh, is because we can't build the light maps in the uh, Apple version. So there is a bug there. I will show you that in just a second. But first, we're going to go ahead and we will do a build of all the lighting in this scene. Uh, so we'll let that go and we'll see what the effect of this is on performance. So I'll be right back in just a second. 
All right, here we are with the lighting built. Uh, it's not going to make a profound difference on the uh, frame rates. Again, you're seeing 15s, 17s, and so on. Looks a little bit better, of course. Now, another aspect of Unreal Engine uh, from 5 on, this is using uh, Lumen. You're going to notice there's this message up on screen. And that's because the scene wasn't really designed to work with Lumen, so we got multiple lights in the scene. And I have to set them to movable for them to be taken over by Lumens, and there's so many lights in here, I'm just not doing that. But one thing that you might be curious about is when it comes to Nanite. So how do you use Nanite? Well, this is actually pretty simple and straightforward. Come down here, and you go to Meshes. And we'll go to Yakohama. We're going to pick all of the meshes in our scene. Basically select them all like so. And then just click, go to Nanite, and say Enable Nanite for Selected. Now I'm going to show you this again with 5.1 for Intel. And then I'll sort of show it to you on the M1. Because, uh, spoiler alert, uh, it is not uh, ideal uh, performing when you get over to the, the that side of things. In fact, it, it just crashes constantly. So this, again, uh, is running on Intel through the Rosetta layer. Uh, anywhere from, say, 15, 13 uh, frames per second, upwards to 20. Okay, so we crashed here for the Nanite as well. So I guess we're just not going to use Nanite on Mac anymore. But that crash, I think that's a good time time now uh, for us to segue over to this version. So let's fire up uh, the non-Epic um, non Game Launcher version. This is running instead on uh, the M1 hardware or the M2 hardware if you have a more current laptop than I do. And we'll see what the comparable performance is like. So once again, we're going to create this project from scratch because I can't just open that project. Uh, it goes through a conversion process. I don't know if there's any implications of actually doing the conversion. So I will create one from scratch again. Same deal, uh, blank project. We will call this one M1 instead of Intel. Go ahead and create it. Now, one thing you're going to notice in general, nice thing uh, with the newer versions of Unreal Engine 5.1 specifically, new project creation is a lot less painful than it used to be. So that's definitely a nice thing. So let that project spin up. So there you go. Okay, I did not mean to create first person template. I thought I selected blank, but it doesn't matter. We're going to overwrite it anyway. So uh, I'll let this process the shaders. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back again to the Epic Games launcher. And I'm going to launch that or going to load the um, same project into this. So I, I will resume, resume once that is complete. All right, so here we are in the uh, M1 powered versions. You'll notice here if I go over to Activity Monitor, uh, it is running on Apple. All of the uh, shader compilers and all the rest of the stuff also run native to Apple now. So that is definitely uh, progress. Again, I did check uh, really quickly on Battery Life. I didn't see any improvement at all, at least on the initial version. So now let's see what happens with performance. So I'm going to come on up here. And let's turn show FPS on, and we're going to do the same walk of shame down this road. So let's go. So we're looking 18-ish frames per second. Stay pretty stable, 18, 18. Uh, and then we get to the end, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. Again, back to 19, 20, 18. So we don't have any of the real dips that we saw before. Uh, so you're definitely seeing a frame rate improvement. Uh, so that is the good news here. Now, stability, not so great. Again, as I mentioned earlier on, I can't compile uh, for Nanite. Nanite just immediately crashes the editor. I'm surprised to see the crash that I got on the Intel side of things. Generally, it worked pretty well. So over here, you can see, again, we're looking uh, mid-20s. So I'm going to turn on to game mode. We'll turn all the widgets off, see what it does to performance. So again, 20s, mid-20s, it's definitely usable. It's, it's a fairly complex scene that I've opened up here. And uh, yeah, so uh, I would say you're probably looking at about a 20% uh, frame rate improvement, uh, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but that is typical of what the Rosetta overhead is meant to be. Uh, so that side of things is definitely looking up. Now, one thing you'll notice is I need to build my lighting. So let's do that, build lighting. And Unreal Light Mass Executable is outdated. Recompile Unreal Light Mass Project with Visual Studio. Uh, so that is a little problematic. Um, I'm not sure if it just wasn't part of the build process, uh, but you can't do light map building. Now, that shouldn't be a big deal if you are working with an entirely Lumen project. Again, if I took all of the light sources in this scene, so I got a number of point lights, for example, if I'd gone through to all of these things and switched them over to movable, so uh, what this will do is let Lumen dynamically calculate. It also will increase the uh, overhead of that particular light. So Lumen is working here. You'll notice here it lit. I could switch over to Lumen mode. Like see, so, come on. Oh, all right, here. 
and you can see the effects of Lumen in the scene. Uh, it's just not really set up as a Lumen environment. So if I built this from scratch and I didn't need light map baking, because you only need light map baking if you're, well, baking light maps. And if you're using Lumen for everything, you won't need to bake light maps. Just be aware right now, if you're using Unreal Engine 5.1 on the silicon, uh, not a great thing. And again, if you start converting your meshes over to Lumen, so or over to Nanite, uh, you're going to immediately start getting crashes. But the good news is, again, uh, for once they get things bugged out, uh, ironed out, I mean, uh, you're going to see, I think, again, uh, a 15 to 20% performance improvement. I I'm a little sad to see that uh, the battery changes weren't that drastic. I would have thought that, you know, running without the emulation layer that would have resulted in uh, better battery performance, but uh, that really didn't end up being the case. So that is on the M1 hardware. Uh, again, all the Nanite stuff is really unstable, especially uh, when you're dealing with uh, the Apple Silicon. Uh, light map building just isn't working at all, but otherwise it, it is uh, seemingly, you know, 15 to 20% faster. Uh, it does work, uh, just stay away from the Nanite stuff for now. And again, I don't know how much of that, the whole Nanite on Mac OS thing has always been a little bit on the questionable side. Uh, I did get it to work just fine earlier uh, when I was dealing with uh, the Intel build, uh, but as you saw from the earlier video, that crashed as well. But there are definitely some issues here. Uh, the uh, light map building is currently completely broken. Um, and for some reason, once again, your project files aren't compatible, which I found very, very strange. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it running on Mac hardware. Uh, so again, 15 to 20% improvements in performance and a whole lot of stability issues that they need to work out. Now, here we are comparing it to my PC. Now, this is a Zephyrus G16. It's got a 12th generation Intel processor, uh, a 3070 Ti card. Again, this is a laptop class machine. And you can see here, we're talking about mid 40s frames per second. Everything here has been converted to nanite and the lighting was left as it was. Uh, there is definitely more of an impact uh, from my video recording when it comes to uh, the Windows side than it does on the Mac side. Also, you may hear a hell of a lot more fan noise in the background. Uh, welcome to Windows development versus uh, uh, Mac development. But it's definitely louder, but it is a little bit faster too. So you're seeing anywhere from uh, 40s, mid 30s. So we don't have the same extreme dips we do uh, from the, the Mac side of things. It is also, again, a heck of a lot louder. And I'm not going to do a battery test because my battery would be dead in well under an hour uh, for sure here. But you can see um, 40s to 50 frames per second across the board throughout the demo uh, with low dips in the mid 30s, high 30s for the most part. So that gives you an idea of how the exact same scene will run on a PC machine. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is Unreal Engine 5 point run running on an M1 MacBook Pro Ultra 2021 compared to a Zephyrus G16. That's about basically about half the speed, double the battery life. Uh, between the Apple version and the Intel version on Mac, you're seeing about a 15 to 20% speed increase, the exact same battery life, and a whole lot worse stability. So, should you try it now? No, you should probably wait for it. It is very much experimental. But when it ships, is it going to be improvement? Yes. Definitely. Uh, again, 15 to 20% is what we're seeing right now, and it is pretty early. So let me know what you thought of that video. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.